The first theory of bonding that we're going to talk about that uses atomic orbitals in its foundation is valence bond theory. In valence bond theory that you may have heard about in, in your organic chemistry course is um, it's actually a little bit more sophisticated than when we can that what we can plot here. Uh, you actually need a computer to to do all the necessary calculations, but it can also be solved in a qualitative manner. So looking back, we have the Lewis structure theory that allows us to predict bond order and the VSCPR that allow us to predict the, the basic structure and the polar properties of, of that molecule. Valence bond theory, unlike these two, use uses atomic orbitals in its foundation. So what is the foundation of valence bond theory? The, the foundation is that a set of overlapping orbitals has a maximum of two electrons. So atoms, atomic, uh, atomic orbitals combine and when they combine they will, the combination will only allow two electrons at a time, one pointing upwards, one pointing downwards, or two opposite spins, one one-half, the other one minus one-half. The other one is that the, the the reason behind the combination is that it looks for large overlap between the two atomic orbitals that are going to share their electrons. And the larger the overlap, the stronger the bond. And the, one of the first predictions of valence bond theory is that hydrogen fluoride has a stronger bond than hydrogen chloride because the 2p of fluor fluorine is similar in size and energy than the 1s of the of the hydrogen therefore the overlap is stronger so if you think about it this is hydrogen for fluorine this would be and for chlorine so that's a little bit larger right so the overlap um, I can actually make it a little bit more exaggerated so that you see the difference. So if this is the, t the 3p of chlorine, the overlap in here is going to be smaller because these two are similar in size, so they're going to have a better overlap and therefore a stronger bond. That's the whole theory behind the valence bond theory. You're looking for uh, a larger overlap of atomic orbitals. However, the, in this case, this may look like a 2p, and it's actually a 2p, but 3 and 4 come together, and it's that atomic orbitals will hybridize, and I'm sure you have heard about the hybrid, the sp, sp2, sp3 hybrid, and that's the result of atomic orbitals that combine with themselves before forming a bond with another atom. Th these are the three or four, if you will, main directions of valence bond theory. So let me explain a little bit more what this hybridization means. If we were to combine one carbon with four hydrogens to form methane, as you well know, the two p orbitals point in orthogonal directions, 190 degrees the 2px, 2py, and 2pz from each other. However, if if you look at methane, uh, via CPR already tell us that the angle is around 109 degrees, so not the 90 degrees. So this means that before the 2p of the carbon combined with the 1s of the hydrogen, these 2p need to oops, hybridize. hybridize make a hybrid. So the 2s and 1 2s and 2, 3 2p will form 3 sp3. Okay, that's what, what you have heard before. And it's an hypothesis, but this hypothesis actually explains the observation that it actually forms a tetrahedron, not a square planner. That would be if the 2p did not hybridize with the 1s, sorry, with the 2s. So the, the main key, key points is that the number of the hybrid orbitals, so as we said here, if you combine, actually, so I lied here, if you combine 1s and 3ps, you will obtain 4sp3s orbitals. 
And that's the, the main point. The number of hybrid orbit orbitals obtained equals the number of atomic orbitals that you use to make that mixture. And the type of hybrid orbitals obtained varies with the types of atomic orbitals mixed. So if you're mixing these, they will have a different shape and energy than if you're mixing, you're mixing P's. So if you're mixing 1S and 1P, you obtain the what you know as SP, 1S and 2P's. This is not the orbital, it's 2P's and 1P, okay? It could be 3S and 3P, there's not necessarily 2P. Okay, and in here you mix 1S, 1S and 3P orbitals. And of course you run out of P orbitals, so you can also include these. So that would be 1S, 3Ps and 1D. And finally, the largest that you may see in this course, even though it's not the, the largest you can get, is if you mix 1s and you mix 3p's and 2d's. Of course when you combine all these you will obtain six hybrids and here you will obtain five and here you will obtain four hybrids in that central atom three and two. Let me give you an example of that um, because I'm sure you have seen this hybridization before but not in the non-organic context. Beryllium chloride. Beryllium has one full 2s orbital and it, and because it's a central atom, the central atom will hybridize so that it can bond with the two chlorines. So it, because it can only it, it can only form two bonds, it only needs one of the piece. So these two will combine to form two hybrids. So we're mixing 1s and 1p to form 2s oops 2sp hybrids. And the rest, the, the, the other two P's will remain unchanged. First of all, what shape will these two SP hybrids have? Well, if 1P and 1S combine, they will form these two hybrids. One specifically pointing to one chlorine, so notice that it looks like a P, but it, it may have the energy also from an S, and the other that it's specifically to bond to the other chlorine. Okay, so we will say that beryllium chloride has two sp hybrids in the central atom, and the other p's, the other two p's, do are not involved in the combination. Therefore, they are non-bonding. They do not participate in the bonding. We will show you more examples, but I will stop here. To keep in mind that we can actually with Balance bond theory explain many kinds of bondings.